name's Brett, and this is Pissed and Broke, and I have no fucking clue where I am right now. <laughs> I'm Joe the Other Guy. I'm Brett. I'm Brandon, and we are the, the Pissed and Broke Podcast. This podcast, we're going to go over a topic suggested by you, and that was what do we do to prepare our cars for winter? So, Brett, what do you do for your car for winter? Well, being that this is my first project car, uh, for me it's just simply putting it in the garage and then because I had the, the hiccup where, you know, I had my coolant spray everywhere and I had water in there, I actually had Joe come over and he helped me basically flush as much out as we could out of the water and coolant, the mixture that we had in there and we put, what was it, full concentrate in there Yeah. because of what water was left, ran the engine until we, I had heat in there and now it should be good for, I think your, me and your dad tested it for, I think it was good for negative 20 degrees or whatever. So I mean that's, but it's going to be in the garage so it shouldn't get any colder than that. So I mean that's... Oh. hope. <laughs> well we're going to put it just in here. Most people don't think, of, most people don't think of anything and that's, but you got to think of what we did. I mean, in case of your everyday driver, the Saturn, we put winter tires on it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Your bunch sits on the side that? of the garage. Yeah, well, so what did you do to, to make it work? And we yeah. made it so you had heat. No, that's basically the uh, main things I wanted to cover are the fact that there's kind of different categories as to what to do to your car. But basically, it falls in as engine oil, coolant, making sure to make sure it's good to handle the negative temperatures. Tires and your visibility. So lights, Wipe wipers, <clears throat> and making sure other people, you know, again, your brake lights and stuff, make sure other people can see you. And a couple tricks to keep your doors from freezing shut. Like your lock hot cylinders, water. your latches. What? Hot water in the windshield. No hot water in the windshield. <laughs> don't put antifreeze in your brake fluid, don't touch the shit. <laughs> With liquor fluid in your headlights. I have not heard that glass. Those, those are most of your engine wear comes from cold engines. So, because there is no flow, it's just, you know, metal on metal. So, the lower, the higher viscosity versus that kind of concept. So, yeah, quicker the flow, the oil to the head and to the rest of the engine means less wear and tear on your engine. Okay. Less ticky noises upon startup. Uh, okay. Unless you have something that takes constantly. We'll fix yeah. that. Yeah, she's old. <laughs> she's old. <laughs> right, bye. Basically, you want to check out for what your owner's manual. Yeah, I'll just kind of state it right now. But basically, you check your car's owner's manual, or it's probably available on Google. You can check what your um, engine oil is for viscosity is needed, and if it dips to a lower temperature in your climate, you can check to see if there is a different oil you should be using. Most times, it's written right in the cap, but you just want to make sure you're using the appropriate oil for your climate and the temperatures you're reaching, which is for your climate. <laughs> Same with the coolant. For yeah, and coolant I, is a little different for me. I my suggestion on that is um, basically for the winter you you want more antifreeze. To or you want to be more. You want a stronger mix of. You want a stronger mix of antifreeze to the water ratio. So I usually run a sixty percent antifreeze, forty percent water through the colder months, and then switch it back to. A, 50-50 mix in the summer. So, like us, for like summers, bracing, straight water, cools out quicker, but you have to drain it all, then you have to do your mix. Otherwise it will freeze and crack your block, as we all know, horribly, will happen. And that is what you were worried about. Yeah, if you have more water in your block than you do your radiator, your block will crack. Under freezing temperatures, because of the because as it freezes, it sits there, and also that ice is thaw expand or expands. I can carter right there, but then the fact as it starts to thaw, and any reason it can actually it start getting water pushed up, and that ice is being pushed more and more to the point where it can't handle the pressure anymore, and you crack it internally or externally, and then your engine's fucked. Hmm. All right, then you have coolant, your oil, and oil and coolant don't mix, 
more compression loss. Yeah. You know, oil over the floor. You're like, what the fuck? He already has that problem. No, no, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> So a couple ways to keep ice off of your windshields and or frozen doors being unstuck. What are your methods other than warm water or like... Also, don't they make ice shields? Like I would say like a blanket ice shield that you can put over the window. Yeah. Don't always work for frost, but it keeps the snow off of the window. Okay. Because there's still obviously relative mm -hmm. moisture. There's moisture, moisture and whatnot. Yeah. It's a good concept if you throw it on. You know, if it's a heavy snow, you can just pull it off. And then you wouldn't have to per se deal with the snow, but you still have to scrape the frost off. Yeah. So for me, during the summer my 240, or during the winter my 240, because I never had heat in my 240, I always prepped my car via snow tires, um, the basically solid amount wiper blades so that way they don't have to worry about clogging. Um, so the hybrid blades per se, even with the thicker. That is a good <clears throat> So they have those hybrid winter blades that have thick rubber material on them so they actually can scrape versus getting stuck and bent and then you're trying to wipe like three quarters of your window unevenly. Um, but otherwise, not being having heat in the vehicle, um, I use kitty litter on my dash, actually like in a sock or something to absorb the moisture. And that did help a little bit. It didn't help, obviously, 100%. But it did have to keep me from scraping my windows down every morning inside of the vehicle. Um, so that was an added plus. So, it sucks. Yes. So a little tippy tip. I mean, cat litter or something, like even like silicone, like those packets you get from uh, or like shoes and stuff like that, those silicone packets, if you put a bunch of those supposedly together, it works. I don't know. I actually use those though. in my toolbox. Yeah, I, I know they, a couple of buddies do this. Room for me. Yep, a couple of my buddies do this. They scatter because they eat the beef jerky. Beef jerky that comes with those powder style ones that aren't as good as the silicones like you get in your shoes. But mm -hmm. yeah, you scatter them all and keeps the moisture out. But for me, for winter wise, let's check the coolant, put snow tires on it, fix the heat. That sucks driving with the window down <laughs> in the middle of winter, trying to keep you from breathing on the window yeah. and having a fog up, which some of us have done all our lives. But that's how I check my winter vehicles. How about you, Joe? How do you prep your winter vehicle? I just make sure everything's good all the time. <laughs> <laughs> We're mechanics to check up on our vehicles. So pretty much, like you said, you know, oil, make sure the coolant's good, and usually most coolant's going to handle, like, if you have a modern car, it's, it's set up for it, but when you get, like, yours, where we were changing it all, you know, more than once, just want to make sure it's at a good mixture, we had to put straight water into it to get it home the one day, so that's, that's the point where you're hitting the danger zone, I've seen a lot of people just put straight water in because their, their car is leaking coolant, and they just keep topping it off, and then one day, doesn't run anymore and they wonder why, but then I have you check your coolant because we got a tester. Yes, yes. We're going to show you. How much was that tester? Uh, two dollars and like 38 cents or something like that. From O'Reilly's. Okay, so you're going to have always hanging next to the actual coolant themselves, as I used to work there. Also, breaking into coolant, do check your own manual for coolant because not all vehicles use universal. Um, some of them do use Pentafrost, which is your pink or purple, and then so on and so forth. So. Don't just think everything's universal because it's not, and I've seen people do that and it coagulates and it gels. And it's not very healthy for the engine. <clears throat> okay, so we're going to go through just uh, obviously the things we just discussed, so you can easily check them on your own vehicle. Now your car is not going to be set up the same way unless you have a Honda Civic, which you should get one. <laughs> <laughs> but basically this right here is the radiator. There is a coolant cap. You might have a pressurized reservoir. This one does not. You have a pressurized cap and the reservoir over here. So what we're going to do now, engine is clearly cold, not going to spray cool, hot coolant in your face. It has been off for quite some time. So we're going to actually open the cap and use this, the tester to test the antifreeze. Do not do this when it's hot. So we just yeah. yeah. I know. <laughs> it has five little balls floating in it. And basically if you have five floating, once you have it up to the proper amount, negative 40, 4, negative 25, 3, and it just keeps going down. So this one clearly has four balls floating, which is good at least to negative 25 degrees. Some, Some clarification. Something you're yelling Don't be an idiot, common sense. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next thing we're gonna be talking about is tires. Obviously the second most common thing that people do not change that they should have done every winter. Um, a lot of people have aftermarket wheels and or even stock ones that don't have enough tread left. So stock 
and or aftermarket tires like these Nittos are actually made to perform above a certain temperature. So a lot of people that have these, they say that they're an all season tire, but they are not because they are actually a softer rubber. But when it gets down to about 30 degrees or so, they actually become a harder compound, meaning so they don't have as much traction in the cold as they do versus what we have on the other vehicle. That is an all season, all winter tire specifically designed for that. So going from summer tires to the winter tires. So on these winter, on the winter tires on this vehicle are um, Firestones, but um, they are a fairly new compound. And if you can get a zoom in view, kind of versus what we have here, you'll notice that they have a lot more of what they consider the call fingers on these. Um, so they have a lot more, basically adjustability and movement to grab onto the snow and the ground during the winter. So, and these perform better below a certain temperature and during the summer they actually wear out. So people that buy these and run them all season, they will actually wear out severely quickly during summer temperatures because they are such a soft compound that they'll actually start deteriorating. So given that factor, winter tires, please people, save all of us from the snow and <laughs> buy proper tires. Um, just due to the fact that they, they really do make a difference. You don't think they will, but they will definitely make a difference compared to your all seasons or even just your old worn out tires. Just spend a little bit of extra money. They might cost a lot. You can find them used like we found these ones. They're still a fairly new tire being used at $30 a tire. Can't go wrong with that for $100 tires. Um, but yeah, definitely get tires. Definitely okay. that's good for the So the other thing I wanted to uh, tell you about, you can use an all season tire, obviously if you have them, but <clears throat> tread depth is a thing. If you get below 5.30 seconds, you're really going to have a tough time in, in the winter and in slush and snow and keeping traction. And the one thing I like to point out about having strictly snow tires as these blizz actual is they are a directional tire. And what actually they do is when you grab kind of sleet and stuff, instead of um, just getting packed into the tire, the tread is actually designed to throw it off to the side of the tire. So it actually gets down to the road and grips it better. And actually, and <clears throat> with the slits in it, it will actually grip against ice better than any other tread design. So that's the good point of directional snow tires. And next, we are going to be talking about these wiper blades. Um, as you can see, we have like an accordion style, which is a standard design and also a single uh, flex monobeam. Um, so the difference between the two obviously is this one stays as a constant curve, this one stays flat. So to contact the windshield, this is already pre-sprung, also during the snow and ice. Um, it'll actually help push and not build up ice and it'll actually keep a full form of the window. Versus the accordion style, like we have here, will actually get ice and build up in between these and then you'll get the offsets and so forth so your wiper blades won't actually wipe as properly or as clean. So the next thing to do is also check your blades before winter to make sure that they don't have any tearing in between these because you're going to have a bad time if they do because these will actually fall away from each other. Mm -hmm. One thing to think about would be your battery. I check to make sure all your connections are good, make sure they're not loose. In my case I actually happen to be tight which is very good. Uh, make sure you check the year if you're not unclear the year, bring it to your local auto parts store and have them check it out for you. Alright, next thing we're talking about is just the simple things to keep you from having a bad day and having your door stuck. So one of the things is you got your key lock. If you don't have keyless entry, your keyholes can get water in them and freeze. So they make simple de-icers available or a penetrating oil, but not like WD-40, use something that's more suitable for cold weather. Next thing is, is there something you can very simply do to your weather stripping to make it so it doesn't get water in there and freeze as ice melts during the day and get in there? You can use a simple silicone lubricant, not just straight up window silicone or anything. Use a silicone based lubricant which won't dissipate in the cold around all the weather stripping and that will keep it from physically freezing to itself and it makes it, you know, so you, <clears throat> so you never get stranded. All right, so basically the one thing you want to run down is you want to make sure your entry oil is appropriate for your climate and that it's full, topped off. Coolant, appropriate for your climate, make sure it's full and topped off. If you And have a radiator cap on it. Yep, and have a radiator cap on it. That helps. <laughs> um, you want to check your battery. If you have any doubts about it, get it checked. Check your tires for good condition and make sure you're not going to slide over the road. Snow tires helps a lot more than all season tires or if you have summer tires only, you're going to have a hell of a time getting around. 
<laughs> and wiper blades. And wiper blades. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing I really actually like is the fact that I have the beam blades make a huge difference in the Absolutely, layer. absolutely. And so just one thing is easy checks to make sure that we didn't go over. Just make sure all your lights work so that way if you're hitting the brakes, somebody can see you hitting the brakes. And that you can see at night. That's headlights. It's good. Please wipe your vehicles off in the morning and when you leave work. <laughs> I see <laughs> too many people with their headlights <laughs> covered and their taillights covered and half their car covered, just a spot for them to see and it's not safe and it's not cool. Granted, I have done that, yes, but it's just not appropriate for winter driving. No, my favorite is the, the winter storm that they, they carry on top of it where they got the three inches of snow on top yeah, and the three they go 60 inches. miles an hour. <laughs> Do you remember when we were at the apartment? We got that super ass snow blizzard, and we went to Walmart and bought the super scrapers that we could extend like five feet up with, <laughs> yeah. and clear off your floor with like eight inches of snow. On it. <laughs> it was like the red top snow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just like hell yeah, I still have that thing. It's fucking awesome. I remember that. Mine was the only viable vehicle that could get us anywhere because everybody was driving cars at the time. Yeah, and it was like. You could probably fucking snowmobile everywhere that day. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty rad. <laughs> like, I'm on the freeway in a snowmobile, bitches. <laughs> Alright, so that's pretty much, uh... Kind of a wrap-up. Kind of a wrap. I don't know you guys... Alright, that's going to be a wrap-up for the Piston Broke Podcast, Episode 3. Also, <clears throat> as always, if you have any uh, questions or comments or anything you want us to talk about, Comment down below, and you can also email, and we will. Yeah, the email's down below. We're, we're gonna get this at some point. The email is down, down below. Not here. Down there. Not up here. Over there. It'll be down below. Right here. God damn, that's what we're doing. Jesus. Okay. Serious. So the email's down below. Thanks for watching. the age of the battery. Uh, if you can't figure that out, just go to bring it to your nearest uh, uh. <laughs> name and everything. Oh yeah, right. Hi, I'm Brett and welcome to Jackass. Too bad. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> Episode three. If you have any what'd you get to? Episode I think you flipped up the phone. <laughs> 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 that is our people. <laughs> up for the new <clears throat> Be a wrap up for the piston broke. I told you that's hard to say. It dude. is hard to say. Piston broke. Piston broke. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> piston <laughs> broke production. Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> <laughs>